This is the first in a series of videos and what we're going to do in these series of videos is show you how to take a brand new APM 2.5 or 2.6 and take it to flight at the field and have it trimmed and flying beautifully. Now the first thing we'll do in this video is actually show you how you configure the firmware and upload it onto the board and then do the initial calibration of your radio equipment, compass, other bits and bobs and tell the board how you want it to behave. It's a very easy setup for APM. It isn't like multi wii if you've watched some of my other videos. There's no editing of code. It's a beautiful graphical interface which makes it simple to do. So there will be other videos after this that will go into those details, but for now we're just interested in getting the firmware onto the board and doing that initial configuration. We're going to be looking at setting up a 2.5 version of the board here, so it's APM 2.5. The main difference between APM 2.5 and 2.6 is the 2.6 actually moved the compass out of this main body up into the GPS module which is usually mounted on a little stick away from all the other electronics. That's a great idea, it just stops any interference on the magnetometer or compass from those high currents flowing around in those big fat motor wires. The reason why you go for APM is that APM isn't the newest generation of board, it's quite a mature technology now but it does a great job. It's a very stable platform, particularly for aerial video. It provides a great support. It's relatively inexpensive now compared with bits pieces like um, the NASA systems, and it's very easy to configure using this graphical interface, but very powerful, allowing to do everything from simple hobby flying um, to long distance FPV and really smart things like actually mission configuration and full autonomous drone flying. So first of all let's talk about what we're going to need to actually set this thing up. We're obviously going to need the board, surprise surprise, we're going to need a PC uh, or a Mac running the mission planner software and we're going to need a USB cable with a micro USB connector. This is the connector that you use to charge Kindles and things like Samsung tablets. And you're also going to need a receiver because part of the initial configuration, you can calibrate the radio and make sure that all the radio channels are moving in the right direction. So it's good to be able to connect that up as part of this and uh, make sure that that's all fine. So, just um, to kind of point you in the direction of where you download Mission Planner. Mission Planner is um, available from here, the uh, Mission Planner software. And um, if you go on to the way I do it is I go on to the Mission Planner installer, permanent link to latest, latest, click on that, click on download, and then go through the installation program and you'll have the Mission Planner or MP as the icon appears on your PC and you'll be ready to go. So before you do anything else, download and install that, make sure it starts and runs. And the next thing we'll do then is connect this board via the USB cable to the PC and connect to it via Mission Planner. So let's go on to my little trusty netbook and we'll go from there. So here we are in Mission Planner and where we need to be is in the initial setup tab. There are two ways you can do the initial setup to get the firmware on the board. The first is to go through install firmware which is the manual way we'll, we'll do today. The second is go through the wizard which takes you through all the steps I'm going to do one after the other. So we'll start with install firmware but before we do that we'll plug in the board. So here's a little video of the board unpowered. So let me just... Um, Bring that up, there it is. I'm going to plug the board into the PC now. Now that is going to appear as COM6. If you're not sure, you can actually do a drop down here and uh, you can select auto, it will find the board. Or I actually happen to know it is COM6. It's the only COM port that's available here. So what we'll do is click on install firmware. You'll get the firmware list from the internet. Here's all the different things you can plug into. We're going to choose the hexcopter. It'll ask me to confirm, I'll say yes. Then it'll go and detect the board version, download the file from the internet, then read that hex file and compile the firmware, and then upload it onto the board. And um, 
once it starts uploading you can see the lights change on the board and we have that flashing amber light now what i'll do is i'll fast forward because this will take um, about a minute and uh, i won't make you sit through that So we're coming into the end of the process now. The total thing's probably taken about five or six minutes to upload the firmware and actually reading it back is taking a little bit more time. Uh, but while this is just finishing, a couple of things to point out here in the Mission Planner software. When you're actually flying the craft, flight data and flight plan is where you'll spend your time. Initial setup and configuration and tuning is where we're going to spend the first two or three of these videos. And then you've got these extra bits and pieces. Um, I have terminal and some of the bits and bobs up here that you can select by clicking on the advanced tab in the configuration. Uh, terminal is a great way to talk to the board using uh, what looks like old MS-DOS, uh, but actually allows you some quite funky stuff like motor testing that's in one of my other videos. And underneath you can see all the different craft that you can install the APM board into, everything from land-based cars and trucks, through planes, helicopters, and then just about every other type of quad or hex try that you can think of. So we've just finished here. So you'll see the board go back to the normal flashing lights and we get this little warning come up that basically tells us that the motors will now, as of 3.1 of the software, automatically start to run when the motors, when the um, APM is armed. Um, I don't like that. I like the motors to spin when I give the throttle. So we can actually change that and we'll do that a little bit later. So we click OK. Now we have the board flashed with the firmware for the hexcopter. Now we need to set it up and do all the other bits and pieces. So the first two things we'll do before we install the transmitter receiver for the radio, there are two things that we could do with doing. One is to set up the magnetometer uh, to calibrate that. And the second is to calibrate the accelerometer. And we'll do that next. And then we'll install the RC receiver and then we'll do everything else. So the next thing we'll do is we'll calibrate the magnetometer and accelerometer. So basically it knows which way it's heading and which way is level. So the first thing we'll do is we'll connect back to the board. So we're in um, initial setup and um, the bits and pieces aren't here because we haven't connected. So again, there's uh, we can see it here now COM6, it says Arduino Mega 26. 2560 that's the one we want we'll click connect and you can see in the little picture of the board um, it uh, will start flashing that little light all the information will come down and then we're actually connected live to the board and we can carry on with the setup process so now on the left hand side we can see that we have now a list of uh, mandatory hardware and this is the things that we need to do straight away before we go any further. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just jump into frame type. Um, it's obviously going to be a there we go an X6 which is great. Um, in fact actually no we're going to go plus because my that mine is that second one so that's the one we want super. Next one is compass calibration. Uh, we're going to click on live calibration here and that live calibration then is going to require me to move this a lot and um, so let me click on it here right so we click it and put move it in all axes in a circular motion now you get this fantastic little graphic and as soon as i start to move this you'll see that we get data points and I'll fast forward this bit because this takes a long time. Okay, and here we are now. We've got over uh, 900 samples and you can see it's kind of created this globe where each of the, uh, the points is being used for calibration. So now we've got that. Um, it doesn't say more samples needed, so we're good. We'll click on done. 
Fantastic. Next one then is the accelerometer calibration. Um, now we click on calibrate accelerometer and then what we need to do this is we need a couple of extra little bits and pieces because we're going to go through a small process and the thing we really need here is, um, is we're going to need one of these which is a set square because we're going to teach the board what level feels like. So the first thing we have to do is it says place the APM level and press any key press the APM on its left. Now be careful here because obviously you want, um, if that's forward that's on its left. I'm just going to have to place this on the edge of the table because um, the way I put the camera won't work. Bear with me, they'll put it back. It's very difficult doing it one-handed, but we'll get there. Okay, back in the video. So here we are. So the next thing, it wants it on its right side. Its right side is this way. So if that's the front, that's right. Again, use um, something that's got a right angle to make sure that you're absolutely perpendicular. Click done. Uh, nose down. Okay, there we go. That's nose down. We'll click done. Nose up, of course. Which is. That way, make sure it's spot on, click done, and put it on its back, click done. Calibration successful, awesome. Right, now the board knows what up, down, left and right looks like. Now the next one here is radio calibration, and we're going to stop there, and we're going to connect the receiver to this board now so that we can do that calibration because at the moment as you can see with no inputs it can't hear anything coming in from the channels. So let's uh, stop here and plug in the receiver. So to connect the radio receiver to the um, APM what you need to do is to go on to the ardupilot.com website to this address and you need to find this page connecting your RC inputs and motors and here they're all listed. So going from the bottom it's aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder and then you definitely want to put one of the leads into the auxiliary port. I'm going to put um, auxiliary one from the receiver because that's the one on my... So let me just um, cable that up and we'll come straight back. Okay, so there we are, we've got it together. So um, pin one goes to aileron, pin two goes to elevator, pin three goes to throttle, pin four goes to your rudder, and pin five here goes to the auxiliary one channel, and that's the channel that has the three position switch that will help us do things like select the mode when we're flying the model. Right, now we've done this, we'll bind it to the radio, and we'll jump back into Mission Planner to do the final couple of steps. But you can see now why we haven't done this until now, because all of that messing around trying to put this level with a set square or moving it around um, in 3D for the calibration of the magnetometer, having this stuff attached is just in the way. So, back to Mission Planner. So here we are back in Mission Planner and uh, we've connected up to the board again with the receiver now installed. We can see we're connected to the board if I move it. Um, you can see the artificial horizon flying around which is great. Um, you can also see from the video that actually the USB is capable of powering uh, the APM and the receiver at the same time so you don't need external power. Just be careful that you don't plug this into an unpowered hub or into a port that's just for data. It needs you know, a 500 milliamp supply. So now we've done that we'll do the last couple of steps. We'll go into initial setup, mandatory hardware and the last three steps that we'll cover is radio calibration, flight mode and fail safe. So, calibrate radio, now we have the receiver connected, we can see all the values that's coming in from the radio. What we do with the radio ready is we click on calibrate radio and then we will move all of the sticks to their extreme limits.
Okay. Now that should have done it. Now you can see uh, channel 5 here on the radio is the one that actually is going to be used to select the modes. So we'll do that next. So we'll click when done. That's that saved. As you've probably noticed, as I move the sticks, the controls on the display move in the same way. So as I move one stick to the left, the corresponding channel, um, the green part of the bar moves to the left as well. The exception with that on this is actually the um, elevator. The elevator seems to have to be reversed in this version of the software in order for it to work properly. So as I push the stick forward, the uh, value of that channel actually goes down. So just be careful of that and when you're setting it up look in the Arducopter uh, website and make sure it's the right way round. I just want to flag that because some of you may have noticed as I've calibrated the channels that was the only one that seemed to go backwards and that's deliberate. Flight modes is um, the modes that you choose via the transmitter so if I move that switch you see it um, highlighting green the ones that's been selected. Stabilize is the one that we start with. Then we have loiter and return to launch are the three that I've done. To change them is very straightforward. You just click on the arrow above the right and you choose the one you want. We will be going through what these different modes are in a later video, but I'd always recommend that you arm the board in stabilize. Loiter means it will sit in the sky in one position at the right altitude. And then return to launch is my oh dear mode. So that's save modes, lovely. Last one is fail safe. And uh, we won't set up fail safe here, but I would suggest that you enable it, set it to return to launch, and then set the throttle channel so that when the radio disconnects, the APM sees less than the figure here. 950 is the one on this one. But we'll do that again in a later video. But with the things that we've done, we are actually now ready to install the board on a frame and go fly. Thank you for watching. Please keep your eyes open for the next video in this series. It should be around in the next five or six days. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please pop them below. Subscribe, like the video, and happy flying.